use headphones for best experience. First, I'd like to show you a new podcast. Uh, I have started a podcast together with a friend, and we are calling it JJ Snacka. Snacka is Swedish, and it means to chat. And that's basically what we are doing the entire episode for 40-50 minutes. Uh, we're chatting uh, about a lot about language. We compare Swedish and Spanish language, but we speak mostly in English. And I think maybe it could be a nice podcast to have in the background while you're doing something else, or if you want to fall asleep, maybe, if you find our voices relaxing. So, you can find it on Spotify, and soon also on Apple Podcasts, and yeah, a lot of places where you find podcasts, so type in JJ Snacka and check it out. Welcome to another video. Today I would like to do some dip and calligraphy writing. And um, there have been some uh, questions about what material I use for this type of drawing or writing, and I thought it would be nice to show you what I'm using today. So, these are the nibs, standard graph, one millimeter. This uh, number one here stands for one millimeter width on the point. small actually I would love to try maybe two millimeters 1.5 so next time I will I will buy something more something wider than this one but it's it works okay I think and the ink is this one Zeikentusche Schwarz what I will be using today. And the paper is this one. Smooth, heavy white weight. And here you can see it's suitable for calligraphy pen. lately on some old English fonts. So that's what I'm gonna... that font is... Uh, I will continue practicing now. Drawing... Uh, sorry, writing some names. And I've chosen names from very interesting old English uh, poem called Beowulf. Uh, it's a poem from... Um, more than 1,000 years ago. It's not known exactly when it was written. Um, the manuscript that has been um, uh, 
that is kept of this poem uh, was written in between 975 and 1025. But the story is probably much older, 700 years older. Um, so the story itself is, is set in a pagan Scandinavia in the 6th century. And Beowulf is a hero of the Geats. So I find all this super interesting because this is like a story that was uh, written, maybe not written down from the beginning, maybe it was uh, just told orally for uh, several hundred years before it was written down. But the story originates from the time before um, the unification of Sweden uh, and uh, the kingdom of the Geats. So it's so long time ago, so in Sweden we don't have any written history about this, uh, any records where you can see when this happened, when Sweden became Sweden, as it is today. Um, because uh, culturally we still have names um, like uh, telling that there were something called Götaland, Gitland, in the regions in the southern parts of Sweden, today Sweden, or mid, not the very southern part, but south of the capital, and that the west coast, so it's called Götaland. Uh, but we don't have any written history from the time when Sweden was uh, divided into Götaland Kingdom and the Svealand Kingdom, because it's so long time ago, uh, even before the Viking Age. So, but this poem, this old English poem, somehow originates from this time period. The migration period, I think it's called, in the first millennium CE, um, the sixth century, then um, the, the story tells about the, um, the king of the Geats compared to the king of the Swedes so and the Danes so there were the Danes the Norwegians and the the Swedes and the Geats so so they were like Swedes and Geats were not united by this point that's so interesting and um, now um, it's believed that uh, the Kitish kingdom were assimilated uh, into Sweden, the, the Swedes, in the end of the 6th century, probably. And uh, it could be, if Beowulf was a real person, it could be, he, he could have been the last king, or maybe, ne or maybe next to last king of the Geats. But uh, he's a very her heroic um, person, he does very non-human things, um, so maybe he wasn't a real person. But in this poem there are actually a lot of persons mentioned, and some of them are actually believed to have been uh, real historic historical persons, because they, their names can be found in other other sources around the world or around uh, Europe, Northern Europe and um, Germany, England sources from Southern Europe and, yeah. so this uh, that's why I find these names from Beowulf quite interesting and I would like to write some of them down today
So names from an old English poem in an old English font. Let's start with the name Beowulf. Can also be translated into bee hunter, and uh, that could be a kenning for bear, because um, by this time and um, in in uh, Viking age and uh, yeah during this time in old uh, in Scandinavia, uh, the old Norse myths, for example, and when they were written down in these sources. There are a lot of kennings. Kennings is um, a way of uh, describing something in other words, like a riddle or a, a secret message. It's like a style, a poetic style. You say, you use uh, another, other words, and also a listener or or reader, you have to know the secret meaning somehow. You you need a, no a lot of knowledge sometimes. Maybe you need to know a whole myth, a story or something to get the idea of the canning. Why why you try to say this when you when you say that? Uh, so that's uh, interesting. Be a wolf is possibly a, a canning. Um, you could say it could be just that uh, uh, bee wolf, um, a bear is like the wolf for the bees, something like that. Next name I will write is uh, Hrothgar, the king of the Danes.
and um, this is actually an old form of the name Roger and it consists of two words Rod and Kar uh, so this first part here Rod could mean praise, fame, glory renown, honor and Kar could mean um, spear, pike. So, um, a glorious spear man, or famous with a spear. I think I'll zoom in a bit. a Danish king and um, where Theo is the queen. So Beowulf comes from uh, the land of the Geats and visit uh, the Danes in today's Denmark. really happy with this W so I, I'll start all over again here it's too much ink right now Start all over again. Okay, I think 
I do something strange with the W's here. I'm not very happy with the result here. I'll practice some more W's. a name that uh, the origin of the name is uh, disputed but one possible translation is uh, foreign slave because uh, this this uh, second part of the name here Theo can be seen in other names too and then it means something like slave or servant or something like that Next name I will write down is Unferd. And Unferd was a Thegn of the Danish lord Hrothgar. And a Thegn is a retainer or a servant. story he is a bit uh, jealous I think on Beowulf and think that he's just uh, bragging over how good he is um, so he's a bit of an antagonist or something and his name there are a lot of theories about what what his name means um, Anfrid one uh, theory which could mean uh, or which means mar mar peace mar I hadn't heard about that wo English word but that is to spoil something so mar to mar peace or unpeace quarrel 
or perhaps unfriend. Maybe the the name is related to the um, to another name called Hunfrith. Hunfrith. A lot of uh, medieval historic persons called Hunfrith. Maybe Ferd doesn't have to do with uh, friend or peace. It could have something to do with soul as well. Soul, spirit, mind, or life. On Ferd. So it's quite unsure what that, uh, the meaning of that uh, name. Now we have the name Grender. Gerender is uh, one of the biggest antagonists in this story. It's a monster. And plays a huge uh, role in the poem. I don't know what, uh, what it means. Next name I would like to draw. Sorry to write, I'm so used to say draw in this video, is uh, Higelak, Higelak, the king of the Geats, by this point, when the story uh, takes place in the 6th century. derives from the Old Norse name Hugleiker and it is composed of the two elements Hugo that means uh, mind, spirit and uh, lake that means uh, game fighting, fighting game or joke amusement and uh, I can see the similarities with the Swedish word lake that is uh, play, amusement, so mind, play or something. Then we have uh, Hygd, the queen of the Geats and the wife of King Hygla.
exactly what this name means. Then we have uh, Herod the Red, the son of Hygrak, and later king of the Geats when Hygrak dies. So he's uh, Hygrak's and Hygd's son, Herod the Red. It's a Beowulf's relative, a Swedish warrior of the Vegmundig clan, who helps Beowulf at the end of the story. So, weak love consists of two parts here, and um, the first part means a remnant, and the second part means valor. So, remnant for valor somehow. And the next name I will write is Eskere. Eskere, Rodgar's closest uh, counselor and friend. Eskere means ash army. Ask 
Aska in Swedish, modern Swedish, so it's very similar, Ash. And uh, hair, hair, army. Also, I think of the Swedish word hair for army when I see this. So, to me, this is quite obvious the meaning. The next name is uh, Hethkin. Um, the previous king of the Gits. So, the son of the Gitish king Hrethel and uh, Hethkin's, Hethkin's uh, was succeeded by Higrak. So, yes, he was the king before Higrak. Try to try to write Hetkin one more time. don't have a meaning for that name either. Now let's move on to Redel, old king of the Gits. Um, Redel was married to a sister or a daughter of Sverting. Sverting must be an old king of the Gits as well. And Hredel had three sons, Hethkin, Herebeld, uh, and uh, Higelak. Okay, so it's Higelak's father, Hredel. And he also has a daughter who marries Egtheo. And Egtheo is the father of Beowulf. So they are um, related to Beowulf and... Um, and uh, Higelak. So Hretel's fost Hretel fosters Beowulf, his grandson, by taking him into his royal household at age seven.
Flatter, and I'm not sure what this name means either. Now we have a name that is Rodolf. Lot of names starting with the letter H, as you can see. Rodolf, which means um, it's actually um, old uh, form of the modern name R Rudolf and even Ralph, and it consists of two parts here: Rod and Ulf. So, Rod or Rad means uh, counsel or advice. And this is uh, Wolf. So that's cool to see old, uh, really old uh, versions of the of names that you recognize from from today as well. Then we have the very first Danish king in this story, uh, called Skuld or Schild. Skuld, skuld skeffling, skuld skeffing. He was a warrior king who founded the ruling house in Denmark. The story starts with the legend of Skuld. And uh, the name probably means shield, protector, protection, defense. Skjöld in modern Swedish. Shield. So here we have the first names, the first piece of paper here. Beowulf, Rodgar, Wealthio, Unferd, Grindel, Hygelak, Hygd, Hjardred, Wiglaf, 
das quiere. Hetkin Redel Rodolf und Skill. Thank you so much for watching. I think I will continue in another episode writing more names from Beowulf. Hope you enjoyed this video. That you found it relaxing and also interesting. So take care. See you soon.